comes a point in everyone's life where you take a look back at your childhood and you realize how terrifying it actually was. This is the original Teddy Ruxpin, a blinking, talking, storytelling teddy bear that every kid dreamed of and drooled over in the late 80s, early 90s. It retailed for $70 in 1985, which puts it around $156 today. And because of that, I never had one. Curse you, lower middle class family income! Well, look what I have here, childhood self. <laughs> How do you like me now? Always taunting me with your full head of hair and your high metabolism. The only problem is, it doesn't work. Like, at all. And no telling why. But if an eBay seller tells you that an item is untested, just assume that it's completely broken. That makes this a prime candidate for hacking. Which is exactly what I'd do to it if I had one as a child. What? I was a curious kid. My goal is to get the eyes and mouth functioning again so that I can control them and make them say whatever I want. Now, if only I could control people like that. Okay, so let's see if we can do this. On the back of the Teddy is the tape player, which can easily be unscrewed and removed. It's also a good indicator as to which version of the bear we have. If the tape player has a metal backing, it's version 1.0. If it's plastic, then you're looking at version 2.0 or later. And then if the circuit board under the tape player is green, then it's either version 1.0 or 2.0. It's beige for later versions. So I've got version 2.0, and this is gonna help me finding documentation online. And that documentation helped me determine that these three connectors are what control the eyes, nose, and mouth. They're wired up to very old, dumb servos, which each have five wires. Newer servos only have three. These two wires control the motor on the servo, so if I'm lucky, applying a bit of power should make them come alive. Unfortunately, I am not that lucky. Guess we're gonna have to go deeper. As I always say, when in doubt, lobotomize. Scalpel, stab. Make a slight incision here at the base of the neck. Very carefully peel back the skin, exposing the foam skull, and remove it as well. We are now in the cranial cavity. Good job, team. I am both disgusted and intrigued by this at the same time. So here's the three servos that control the eyes, nose, and mouth. And to get them out, do not try and force them like I did. Always a bad idea. Instead, unscrew one side of the motor and the pieces should slide out in opposite directions. Since they need to be replaced altogether, I might as well just upgrade them to newer servos. So taking apart the casing, we have a ton of different gears. I discarded all of them except for these last two. We can then take this one and fasten it to the top of a new mini servo. Then we can clear out the rest of the gearbox and the motor, leaving the wheel and axle. To get the servo to fit up against the axle, I used a Dremel to trim away some of the plastic. Then I hot glued it into place, and then to test it out, I connected it to an Arduino and uploaded the sample Arduino servo sweep coat. By Jove, it works! So now I started piecing the servo casing back together, trimming it to fit around the servo. I did this for the remainder of the other servos and then fit them back into the head. I ended up having to extend the servo wires by soldering more wire to them. And please be careful with the soldering iron and try not to burn a hole in your brand new cutting mat. I then ran the wires through the neck into the body cavity. Wow, that sounds gross. Okay, so we fixed the broken motors. Now we just have to find some way to control them. Don't worry, Mr. Bear. We have ways of making you talk. <laughs> I'm gonna be using my trusty Arduino Uno to control the motors. I took the data wire from each of the servos and connected them to pins 9, 10, 11 on the Arduino. We'll need a separate power source to power each of them, and then we'll need to connect the Arduino ground to the common ground of the servos. So the wiring should look something like this. To simplify everything, I used an Arduino prototyping shield to connect everything to it and then added a USB-B adapter to power the motors. Then I wrote some code that sets up each motor, initiates them, and then I made a function for blinking and talking and then looped through these functions in the main loop. Then I uploaded this code to the Arduino. To power it all, I used a 2200 milliamp hour charger where I can just plug everything in via USB and let it run. Okay, so as a proof of concept, it totally works, but it needs to do more than just a functionality test. It needs to actually talk and produce sound, but we'll save that for another video. 
Until then, if you're following along, see how you can tweak the Arduino code to make the Teddy Ruxpin do what you want. And if you don't have a Teddy Ruxpin, see if you can apply this to other toys or robots. What ideas would you like me to cover next? Submit or vote for your favorites at tinkernut.com ideas. Click here to watch more videos like this, and if you got any value out of my show and like to give some value back, please feel free to like, subscribe, comment, follow me on social media, or donate at tinkernut.com donate. All right, that's it for this tutorial. For more, go to tinkernut.com.